Hi, I'm Matt Reynolds, editor of Packaging World Magazine, back in Dusseldorf, Germany at Interpack. So whether we're talking about bio-based materials, uh, compostable materials, uh, high PCR content materials, uh, the most polarizing and the most talked about topic in packaging today is plastics and plastic films specifically. Here's what we saw on the show floor. When I think compostable films, Futamura's Nature Flex film always leaps to mind. At Interpack, I saw an in-market example from Italian-produced brand Sant'Orsola, who not long ago chose compostable Nature Flex as its lidding film for blueberry packaging. These films are produced from sustainable wood pulp harvested from responsibly managed plantations and are certified to both EU and US composting standards. Plus, and this is key, the Two of Austria OK Compost Home Standard. Put this film on a cellulose punnet and the whole system, including any fruit scraps you have left over, are backyard compostable. An even newer in-market example by European supermarket Penny was this tag, also called a, called a wine glass closure in the UK. Think of a netted bag of lemons or clementines or potatoes in the produce section of your supermarket. This is the small tag that's on the closure of those netted bags. In this application, a German potato producer tags the bags with a lamination of paper and nature flex film, where the film is reverse printed with glossy logos and nice looking messaging. The mechanical properties of the paper fibers and film work together for a uniquely tear-resistant tag that, again, is backyard compostable. Over at the Pro Ampac booth, I saw a new BPI-certified food-grade industrially compostable tea wrapper for popular tea brand Traditional Medicinals. The compostable wrapper features a thin, metallized barrier layer commonly found in snack food packaging that protects the quality, efficacy, and freshness of the herbs in the tea blends. And finally, to be used in conjunction with compostable films, Freshlock was on hand with its industrially compostable zipper closures. These are notable because they bridge the reclosability gap with compostables. On display at Interpack were two complete zippers, a standard, transparent, single lock for reclosability, and a child-resistant version with a green film element that has an internal mechanism uh, making it difficult for children to open. This could be used for pharma or nutraceuticals or consider the burgeoning cannabis market. Switching away from compostables, as you might expect, I saw a ton of examples of monomaterial films with barrier layers that are certified recyclable in certain streams depending on their location. Here we see an example from P&G with a monomaterial pack developed with Breckett Benkeiser. And from Toppen, here are examples of monomaterial PE, which is technically recyclable in the US but not curbside recyclable and monomaterial PP, which is recyclable in Europe. They do a much better job with polypropylene recycling than we do in the States. Now these films are increasingly available. Every film producer, it seems, has them in their for portfolio, and the barrier properties and technologies are continually improving. Usually these consist of a base layer, a thin barrier layer of something like EVOH, and then a sealant layer that might be reverse printed but a lack of collection and recycling infrastructure continue to hamper practical recycling efforts. Now, if there's a sustainability trend going on in plastic films, Sabic is bound to have a commercialized example of it, and their booth at Interpack proves that rule. Launched during Interpack on the bio-based plastic side of the film world was the Stella McCartney Beauty Pack that resulted from the collaboration of Sabic and three French plastics converters, Texan, Legatech, and STTP Embellage. They created a pack for skin and eye care refill containers with certified renewable polymers from Sabic's True Circle portfolio. A cradle-to-gate life cycle analysis concludes that each kilogram of these bio-based resins reduces CO2 emissions by an average of four kilograms as compared to the fossil-based virgin alternatives. I also saw in the flesh a recent example of a Garofalo pasta, pasta application revealed only a couple of weeks ago that covers a ton of sustainability trends and buzzwords all in one pack. The sustainable material is derived from advanced recycling and is converted to biaxially oriented polypropylene film for this application, which is the first mono PP packaging material in the market containing 30% of PCR post consumer uh, recycled materials. The film is converted and printed by Italian suppliers GT Polyfilm and Polivuga. Finally, a collaboration of Sabic. Estigo Packaging Solutions and Coldwater Prawns of Norway are introducing at Interpack a frozen foods pack made with certified oceanbound plastic content, this time oceanbound polypropylene. Oceanbound plastic is waste defined as at risk of ending up in the ocean, so it's collected from within 50 kilometers of the coastline, often in or near outgoing rivers and tributaries, to collect it before it can get to the ocean. Now on the subject of oceanbound plastics, one final film-based application I saw at Interpack 
that bears mentioning is one I saw in several places, both at the Sabic booth and also at the Tag Leaf Industries booth. Turns out this is a real-life application of a label I saw last year at Pack Expo by UPM Rafflatech. It seems that this Italian fish producer, called Zerati, and of course it only makes sense for a fish company to have a protective stance on the ocean, is using what are called ocean action label materials in their tuna product line. The company says these pressure-sensitive labels are made from chemically recycled materials, polypropylene in this case, so they're identical to traditional plastic films. So a unique application by UPM Rafflatech and a, and a cool label by Zerati. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in plastic films right now, and there's more to be seen tomorrow. And I'll be back at it then. Talk to you next time.